Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we'll take a brief look at the structure of a Java program. For this, we'll be using Replit, an online code writing platform that we used in one of the previous video series. To open Replit, please go to www.repl.it or click the link below this video. To create a new program in Replit, press the Start Coding button, select Java from the list, and press Create Repl. We will not be using Replit later on for a few reasons that I will explain later, but for the purposes of this video, Replit works just fine. Let's look at the default Java program that Replit created for us. Some of you have probably figured what this program does just by looking at the code. If you run this program, here in the console area we will see the text Hello World. And the line of code responsible for printing is this long one. Some of you might reasonably ask, why is this line so long? Well, before we get to that, let's first look at the general structure of the code. The very first line says class main. This line is the so-called header of the class. A class header is followed by the body of the class, which is confined inside a pair of curly brackets. Now, before it gets more complicated, I'd like to make sure that you remember that Java is an object-oriented programming language, and that object-oriented programming, or OOP, is based on using objects and objects are made from classes. If this doesn't sound familiar to you, I recommend that you refer to the previous video before proceeding with this one. So we have a class called main. A class is effectively a data container. A piece of data inside a class is a member of that class. There are two types of members, members that represent certain features or characteristics of the class, and members that represent behavior of the class. To make it simpler, classes can contain variables and methods. Our main class doesn't have any variables at the moment, so let's add one. To add a variable to a class, we need to declare the variable in the body of the class. Variable declaration in Java is similar, if not identical, to variable declaration in C that we used in one of the previous video series. If you're not familiar with the concept of variable and variable declaration, I recommend that you refer to the video series on basics of programming with C. So if we type int a followed by a semicolon, it will add a variable of the type int called a to our main class. Now, even though our main class did not have any variables before we added one, it did have a method, this one, named main. Please note that the name of the class starts with a capital M, while the name of the method starts with a lowercase m. It is also important to keep in mind that Java is case sensitive, meaning main and main are two different names. There is a somewhat important convention. In Java, class names are capitalized, while method and variable names generally begin with a lowercase letter. This is not a strict rule, but a nice tradition to follow. All right, so this line of code is called, can anybody guess? It's the header of the method. And just like with classes, this method's header is followed by the method body confined within this pair of curly brackets. If the method header looks too bizarre to you, don't worry. For the purposes of this video, the only important part of the method header is the name of the method, which is main. Now, before it gets overwhelming, let's do a quick recap. This line of code is called a class header. Simply put, this line of code creates a new class. The code for the class goes inside a pair of curly brackets that immediately follow the header. A class consists of members. There are two types of members, variables and methods. To add a variable to a class, we need to declare that variable inside the body of the class. A method, too, has a header and body. The header of a method includes the name of the method, which in Java normally begins with a lowercase letter, with some exceptions, of course. Now it's time to get to this line of code that, as some of you have probably figured, is responsible for printing hello world. First of all, let's look at these three words separated by a dot. Even though it looks like a period in programming, it's called dot, or the dot operator. The first word is system, and it's capitalized, which should give you a hint as to what it is. Right, it's a class. The next word, out, refers to a member of the system class, or simply put, it's a variable inside the system class. Lastly, println is a method that belongs to the variable out. This description is not 100% correct, but it's good enough to keep things simple. Now, how do I know that println is a method? 
The best indicator is the pair of round brackets following the word println. There are two things about methods that are worth mentioning at this point. First, as some of you have probably realized, methods are somewhat similar to functions that we used in the C language. By the way, does anybody remember how to make the computer print hello world in C? Right, printf hello world. So is there any difference between functions and methods? Well, you can say that both refer to the same thing. Both functions and methods have the same purpose. They process data. The difference is rather subtle. While functions are generally independent, methods belong to classes. And this is basically the difference. Methods are functions trapped inside classes. This is why in order to print hello world in C, we just use the printf function. And to achieve the same result in Java, we call the println method that belongs to out, that belongs to system. Why make things so complicated? Well, there are reasons for that and there are certain advantages which we're not going to cover in this video in order to keep things simple and not overloaded with too much theory. The second thing about methods that I'd like to mention in this video is the difference between declaring a method and calling a method. This line of code, the header of the method, declares or creates a new method called main. And this part calls or uses another method called println. In other words, when you declare a method, you sort of create a to-do list for the computer. And when you call a method, you make the computer execute the to-do list. Now let's get back to system.out.println. You don't really need to know that system is a class, out is a variable that belongs to the system class, and println is a method that belongs to the variable out. First of all, while this description is logically correct, technically it's not completely accurate. And secondly, for now, you can just treat this long piece of code as a single instruction that prints something. What I do want you to understand, however, is that classes and objects made from those classes consist of members. And to access those members, you use the dot operator. The dot operator sort of unpacks a class or an object and reveals its members. Let me show you an example. Say we have two red balls and we place them inside separate boxes, box A and box B. To access the ball inside the box A box, we can use the dot operator and the code will look like box A dot ball. And to access the ball inside box B, we can do box B dot ball. Now, why would we want to access the balls? Say each of the balls is an object that has a method called change color that changes the color of the ball to blue. Now, if we do box A dot ball dot change color, the color of the ball in box A will change to blue. This is an illustration of the idea that objects in OOP can contain variables, which can also represent other objects. In our example, each box object contains a ball object. And also, objects can have methods that describe the behavior of the object. In our example, each of the ball objects has change color method. This tells us that a ball object can change its color, and changing color is a behavior. Now, before we wrap up this video, let's do a bit of programming, shall we? It's been a ton of theory, so we might as well do a little bit of practice. Let's have our Java program print the result of addition of 5 and 5 instead of hello world. Like this. What a useless thing, you might say. Yeah, but does anybody remember how to achieve the same result in C? In C, we had to add an explicit instruction to interpret the result of addition as an integer number. The point is, even though Java code is generally long and verbose, some things in Java are more user-friendly than, for example, in C. And this is it for this video. In the next one, we'll be more practical and less theoretical. Specifically, we will learn how to create objects from classes and how to use them. See you then. Bye.